Hi people, today we're going to be talking about Casting Firelight by Dana Swift and I have to say that I completely love this book. I wasn't expecting to love this this one as much as I did uh, because I was thinking it was going to be more romance heavy, romance heavy. And uh, to be honest, it has romance, but it has lots of other things that are amazing. I wasn't expecting like the cage fighting and it was amazing, yeah. Um, before beginning my review, I have to note that this is not an own voices book. At the end of it, you're going to find the author's note in which Dana Swift, the author, is going to tell you her reasons for writing this book. And it's because uh, she is uh, one part of an interracial couple. And she kind of wrote this book thinking about uh, her kids and, you know, all these kids that come from mixed uh, parentage. Parentage? It's that pronounced like that? Okay, heritage. And uh, she kind of wanted to have this kind of representation for her future kids. So here it is. And it is also, um, well, it has uh, its roots in Indian culture. It has also a heavy dose of imagination and fantasy. And I think it grows perfectly well. Uh, there's lots of mixed reviews about this book, but I have to say for my part um, that uh, it, it was amazing. I love it. And if you feel like you have to be more informed, uh, just check other reviews by own voices, uh, reviewers and all this and make your own decision about it. So yeah. What are we going to find here? Uh, we're going to begin the book with Adra when she's a little kid and she's going to be introduced to her future husband. She doesn't like the idea of being thrown into this marriage kind of thing because, you know, she isn't thinking about those kinds of things. So when she met Jadine, uh, she's like, uh, she slaps him. And I love that because he is a brat, uh, he wants to show off and which is a very sorry spot for Adra and so she reacts by slapping him and I did love this introduction because you can see from the very beginning that Adra is not a conventional female, she's not going to be submissive and she has like very strong headed personality and I love her for it. So fast forward in the future, it seems like the lovebirds are like sharing correspondence, sharing letters and everyone wants to hear what Jatin is, is writing to Adra, so she indulges them, read the love letters, and when she's alone on her bedroom, she casts a spell that really reveals the content of the letter, and it's like they have this relationship in which they keep pushing the other, saying, I did that, I can you best it, sort of, and I love that because they are like always pushing each other. So one thing brings another thing, and they end up meeting, but uh, they have been without seeing each other for quite some years. From They saw each other when they were kids, and they, now they are kind of young adolescent, adults. So when they see each other again, they don't recognize each other. So it's funny because Adra doesn't present herself as Adra, and Jatin doesn't present himself as Jatin. So, you know, um, <laughs> I don't want to make more spoilers about this book because I think it's amazing. Let's say that Adra is uh, following a kid that has stole something and the kid gets into danger and she saves the kid and uh, she saves the kid for being stomped by an elephant and the elephant is part of the welcome committee of Jatin. So Jatin and his work uh, jump from the elephant and go help this girl. So uh, they change personalities, you know, Jatin and the war, uh, because, you know, in order to protect him, because he's very well known, he has a war that looks similar to him, and they sometimes interchange papers, roles. So um, Jatin is interpreting the role of Kalyan, the war, so he's the one that goes to Adra without knowing who she is, he thinks that she's a peasant girl who risked her life to save this kid, and so Adra uh, suspects that, you know, the Maraja, his fiancé, is the other one. It's uh, actually Kailan, who is portraying Jatin. And uh, she doesn't want to say who she is. Uh, so she invents this personality. So she says that her name is Yaya. And, you know, and it, it's funny because it all begins with this, like, we are who we are. We, we are telling we are other people. And uh, this uh, deception helps them... Mm, to know each other and fall in love. And then it begins the part of, oh my God, I'm going to be married to another person, but I love this one. What will happen if I was able to choose? And you as the reader are thinking like, tell them, tell them, tell each other. You have to know that you are who you are. 
Okay, uh, yeah, the romance is stuff I like a lot uh, because it's like enemies to lovers, but not really knowing that they are really the person who they are. So they both lying to each other. And one of the things about this book is that they want uh, to be equals. Adra doesn't want to feel inferior to Jatin, and Jatin wants uh, to treat Adra like an equal. And it's funny because there are some times in which they say that even the lying which they began the relationship makes them equal because they are both hiding their personalities, their real personalities, in order to present who they really are without the label of I am that person and I have that power when I have this position in life. So yeah, I mean, it was amazing in that in that sense. And also Adra, uh, she comes from the royal family, but she wants to help her people to be more prosper, to, to have more resources. So she creates something called Firelight, where you can, you know, illuminate a home and you can use the fire. It lasts for two months. The idea is that it's very cheap, but someone is kind of corrupting it, um, harboring it and selling for higher prices. So she wants to know what's going on. Also, there is um, this organization called the Bankring, and they deal with drugs, and there is lots of people who are being um, affected by this group because it offers power. Let's say also that I forgot to, to, to mention the most important part of all of this, and it's that people have magic. And as you can see, they have these swirls on their arms, uh, Jatin has the swirls in both arms, which is the normal thing, and Adra only has it in one. So all her life, she feels like she's less than, and she feels like she has to prove herself harder, and she hides the arm that doesn't have the swirls because she it's like an oddity, and people it's going to judge her, and you know, it doesn't matter how much she does, she's always going to be finding lacking. So she's under all this pressure, and yeah, they have magic, going back to the orb things, um, there's people who are using the drug, the banking, are uh, selling in order to have more power and use more magic, and then they are left with the after effects. So, in, um, there's lots of situations going on, which I'm not going to explain, and Jadine and Adra end up teaming together to try to unrot the evil that's corrupting the, 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 the place, and... Yeah, I'm not going to say much more because I don't want to say much more. But yeah, I say about cage casting, uh, cage fighting at the beginning. It's like there is this underworld in which Adra uh, finds herself fighting in order to get information. And she portrays this another person called Smoke. And she's like an infiltrator. And it's amazing how many things she can do. And yeah, it's like, imagine like this cage is like a big sphere in which they fight using spells and magic. And it's amazing because Adra is really powerful. And, and now I'm going to talk about the topics about this book now that I say that Adra is very powerful. I like the idea of whether both of them want to be seen as an equal to the other. They don't want to say I'm more powerful. They began the relationship like, you know, trying to say, hey, try to power me. But in real life, when they meet, they uh, struggle or want to be on equal footing because Jatin has always been seen as the Mahfouti future Maraha and he wants to have like not anonymity but he wants to be judged for who he is not for his label who he's going to be in the future but the person that he is now and that he has to offer and more or less it's the same with Adra so I love that they try to be you know in this equal footing and I love that Jatin knows that Adra is more powerful and he's not ashamed to say you are more powerful than me and I think that it's very important to have this kind of things in books you know where uh, males don't don't have egos that suffer because the female is more powerful. And also I love how uh, many times in this book we can uh, say that it's a very feminist book because Adra is thinking or saying or the females around her are trying to outcast the roles you know, the society puts them in. It's like women are only, you know, and there's lots of powerful women in here. And we are going to see... I don't want to tell because one of the most revealing things is towards the end by a character that you weren't expecting. And it's like, yeah, because women are always seen as good as their magic can be or as beautiful as they can be. And we can be much more. And I love that we have uh, different women of power put in different places. And yeah, it's amazing. I also, as I say, I love that they are equals in the relationship. And there's one thing that I love about this book. And it's, there's one time in which they are fighting and Adra is losing. And Jatin is like, how are you losing? Because you are bet better than me. And she flops through the floor and says, yeah, but I'm menstruating. And when I'm menstruating, I'm slower. And I love that because usually you don't have women who menstruate in books. It's like this, this big taboo. And if they do menstruate, it's like hiding inside a home and they don't say it openly in front of a boy they like. 
So for me, it was amazing to read this part. And it was also amazing that Jadine is like, oh my God, she's menstruating. And then um, she looks at her, he looks at her and can see that she's suffering from cramps. And he offers to help her craft a potion uh, to, a, to ease her cramps. And I think that's amazing that, you know, it's not, he's not offended, he doesn't react badly, and he wants to help her in her menstrual cycle. So for me, that was amazing and top-notch. And I love that. And I love that it's something that's going to appear more in the book and because she's human, she's a woman, she menstruates. Get over it. So yeah, I love that. I love how both of them want to come clean and tell the truth and say, hey, you know what? I'm not that persona that I'm impersonating. Yeah, who I really am is and I love how it all comes out. Also, I love this idea that Adra makes a reflection that she's not only Adra or Jaya, who she's impersonating with Jadine, or Smoke, who is the person that goes to the fighting, but she's all of them. I mean, she's not portraying roles. They are all sides of her, and depending on the situation, it's like she chooses who to be. I mean, people, real people, have liars. And depending on where we are, we show one or the other. I mean, if we are at work, we are not showing the same side that we're showing when we're with family or with friends, you know, and I love that idea. This idea that I'm not just one side, but just I'm a multi-layer person. Also, I did love the representation, even though um, it's also infused with fantasy and with the ideas from the author. It's not like I don't want to say it's not real representation, but here you go. And yeah, I mean, also this book is funny. Uh, it's full of mystery because you don't know who the bad guy is. And it's, well, it's also, like, we have these characters who dub themselves. I'm going to be able to be the manager that people expected me to be. I'm going to be able to control magic as people want me, as I want to. And these characters who you think that are like side characters who are very important too, and I love Prisha. Uh, the sister Prisha or Priya, and now I don't remember exactly. I think it's Prisha, and the other character is Ria. Uh, characters that come from her side are amazing. Kailan has so much to offer. I hope that in the second book we get to learn more about these characters because I love them. So if you want to read uh, a book that's going to entertain you, that's funny, that has a lot of good topics like representation, Different in differences in power, uh, equality in relationships, uh, menstruation, and uh, people who want to be better than they are, and they are striving. Even sometimes they are going to fail, and I think that it's very important that they they fail because in real life sometimes you prepare yourself a lot for something and you still fail, and you can sit down and you can cry and you can say why, and then you get up and get on and try again. And I think it's something that appears in this book too, and I did love to see that that it's not magic, that sometimes people fail, and sometimes people get on and keep on fighting, and, and I love to see that in this book. So yeah, I cannot recommend this enough, because it's amazing, you guys. So thank you for watching. Bye!